Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're gonna talk about the comb sort which is a, a descendant of the bubble sort. Now, I remember a time where I actually in college learned what a bubble sort is. Since then, uh, people have been trying, I think so, to improve the bubble sort and uh, this is what we have come up with. It is called comb sort. A comb sort is basically an improved version of the bubble sort. So if you don't know what a bubble sort is, I recommend you check that out because a lot of other concepts that I'm going to tell you in this are going to be bubble sort, assume, assuming that you know what a bubble sort is. If you don't know what a bubble sort is and you still want to continue, it doesn't matter, just, uh, just uh, you know, just stick around. So let's go and go at the first of the start. So this is the array that we're going to consider. It is a very small array because I don't want to make it a little bit uh, too complicated. It is simple uh, the way it is. Then you have the comb sort uh, function call over here. So here we're just telling... Um, Hey Python, I want to call this function and I want to pass in the array that I defined in the parameters over here. So comb sort of array is what we're going to find. Uh, and this is basically printing the array. Once the processing of the comb sort is done, you basically print the array out. Okay, let's go back to the comb sort now. So the comb sort is an algorithmic function. So yeah, this is the algorithmic function. This is the descendant of the bubble sort as I just discussed. And now it comes to the interesting part. Now, what is the difference between the comb sort and the bubble sort at a macro level? So in the bubble sort, every element you compare is next to each other. It's adjacent to each other. It's next, you know, next to one another. So, so what basically happens is that every time you run it, you only get to compare with the elements next to it. So when a swap happens, only then and only then will you be able to compare the first with the third or the first with the fourth. Now, the comb sort is a little bit different where you start off the comparison uh, end to end from one end to the other end and then you go chopping down the incrementer one by one. So the incrementer is basically going to be the value which you add to the index to basically compare a value. So if you have an incrementer of say five, you're gonna have an index of say i and i plus five will be your next index that you compare with. So it's not an adjacent, uh, so you don't compare numbers adjacent to each other, you compare numbers that are far away from each other, but then you have a method to recalibrate that, that incrementer so that you can bring them back together and you know go forward with it. So I wanna talk about the incrementer first. So uh, let's just read the comment what I wrote over here. This function takes the value of the current incrementer, divides it with the value of 1.3. Okay, 1.3 in this case is the arbitrary value that science, a lot of scientists who ran tests on about 200,000 uh, numbers found to be the most ideal um, to be used in, in, in sorting. So, so 1.3 is the value that you divided with. So let's say you have an incrementer of say 10, you divide it by 1.3 and it, then you get your next incrementer. So over here, uh, you have inc equal to inc divided by 1.3 and then you return one if INC is less than one. So you don't want the INC to be ever less than one because if you have INC less than one and if you floor that INC, so let's say for example, you have INC equal to 0 0.5 and you say int of 0 0.5, your answer is going to be zero because it floors it, right? So, and you, there is no point in comparing the same value with itself, right? There is no, no reason to do that, okay? There's no reason to do that. So which is why if INC becomes ever less than one, uh, you basically uh, return a one. Else you can return um, int of inc because you want to compare. You want to add something to the index. So indexes are integers. Hence you can convert it to an integer. So in Python it's pretty simple. You just say int of inc. Cool. Yeah. So inc recalibrating. So in this case also you can think of the inc as a uh, as a as a fuel. So until the inc exists, the the loop is going to be running. Okay. As long as as long as INC becomes less than one or becomes one, then we have a problem. Cool? Cool. Okay. So um, comb sort of array. So this is what we're going to start with again. Initially, the INC uh, starts from the highest value and the highest value is the length of the array. Okay. This Boolean tracks. So we have this Boolean called swap. So swap basically tracks whether a swap has occurred in this particular uh, operation. So Let's imagine a situation in which INC is not equal to one, okay? INC is not equal to one and swap is false, okay? Then you, you will be able to run this function, right? Because, because you have some, some kind of INC, some kind of fuel to burn out. Because INC, uh, unless you're comparing the same value with itself, you, that there is some merit to, to going forward with the comparison, okay? But let's say your INC uh, is not equal to one because INC we are returning one, right? So it cannot be less 
So if inc is not equal to one and swap is uh, is, is, is not equal to true, which means uh, a swap never occurred and, and both those values, uh, inc is also not available, then, then it basically means that the array has been sorted, right? So if inc is one and no swaps are happening, the array has been sorted. If either of them are true, you need to go forward, you need to go with the loop, okay? So, so every time you run this loop, so every time this loop runs, inc gets de decremented, right? Decremented, uh, a better word would be it gets divided by a factor of 1.3. So let's say 10, it starts from 10, you 10, divide them by 1.3, and then answer you divide 1.3, and over and over again, until you, you run out of inc, right? So inc, you recalibrate every time you run this. Uh, if, you, if you observe closely, you never use the length of the array, right? You never use inc equal length of the array. So immediately once you get inside the while loop, the first thing it does is recalibrate the inc, recalibrate the inc. So you never use the length of the array for the inc, right? Then you basically reset swap to false. The reason you set reset or set swap to false is you want to check whether a swap has occurred. If a swap occurred, it will be set to true in this in this loop. Now, how does a swap occur? Like what happens? Why does a swap occur? So for i in range of zero to length of um, the array minus inc. So the reason we use this is because uh, length of array minus inc plus inc onwards, uh, no elements exist. There are no elements, there's literally nothing to compare with. Hence, we basically go through i, which becomes zero. So in, in Python, you have the for loop, right? The for loop is for x in range of uh, one value to one another, and this is never included. Hence, this value, uh, you can't go above it because uh, then i plus i and c will have no elements to compare. Hence, once you get this, once you go to the for loop, you want to make sure you have that padding left because you want to check i plus i and c. So if array of i is greater than array of i plus i and c, which basically means you're comparing the first value with the second value and, and testing whether they are uh, and comparing them. So in an ascending array, if you want the array to go array values to go up and you want to create an ascended array, then you have to basically swap it when you find something like this. Hence, you go ahead and swap. Uh, in Python, it's pretty easy to swap. You can just use this kind of operation where array of i, if you see array of i is over there and this part is over here which means that uh, this value gets uh, this value and this value gets this value. And that's how it works. And if the swap has occurred, we basically go out and say swap is equal to true. Hence, uh, hence this is one pass. And if you know what a bubble sort is, you would understand this is one pass. And then you go back into the loop and you recalibrate INC and then you do the whole thing over and over again until INC uh, is equal to one or uh, the swap becomes true, uh, swap becomes false. So if both of them uh, if, if, as you can see, it's an or statement, right? If both of them are false, it means it's false and the whole thing uh, gets finished. So as you can see, uh, the array has been sorted and then you can move forward. So I'll just run this program once and test it out. So a better way to run it will be from here. And as you can see, it is sorted and it works just as intended. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, guys. I love the fact that you watched this video. Uh, like, share and subscribe. And uh, let's say um, if anybody wants to know how specifically a comb sword works i can send them this video so thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next one